Some good news if you're looking for a digital power trip. A sequel to the Space Marine 2 game has been revealed, with an awesome animated trailer and maybe an interesting detail that could manifest itself in the tabletop game. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're just taking a video away from the tabletop and miniatures to talk about the really pretty awesome news of a new Space Marine game, and one with a spectacular new animated trailer. It looks like it could be one of the most exciting and biggest video game releases for 40k in quite some time. It's quite nice to see someone actually bite the bullet and actually go for a full on 40k action game, set as a Space Marine on the front lines, rather than the pretty consistent stream of turn based action computer games that they've come out with over the past few years. I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with the turn-based games or exploring some of the other interesting corners of the 40k lore. Necromunda Hired Gun was certainly pretty iconic, but it's really good to see someone actually having a go at making the core game of 40k into something that you can actually play as a computer game. It's maybe a simple desire from the fans, but perhaps one that would take a lot of time, effort and skill to deliver something that meets up to expectations. Space Marine 2 is unsurprisingly a sequel to the original game simply called Space Marine. That one I believe is just over 10 years old now, releasing in 2011 and getting very very positive reviews on Steam. I believe that sequels to the game were originally planned but they never wound up materialising and it's certainly one of the titles that fans have most wanted a refresher of and it's good that Games Workshop has managed to make that happen. For those who haven't played the game, it's a third person action game, giving you access to really quite a lot of the Space Marine war gear and at least in the campaign mode you take command of Captain Titus playing through a narrative that has you squaring off initially against orcs and then overcoming the forces of chaos which similar to the Dawn of War series often seem to get themselves involved in one way or another. For a mainly action based game as well there are some interesting narrative aspects to it. In particular one of the main conflicts of the game is following the Codex Astartes versus being more flexible, something I'm sure that could rankle in a military situation if one of the force can't do anything that isn't already written down in the book. The original game I believe was developed by Relic under the Sega umbrella, and this one's made by Sabre Interactive under Focus Entertainment. It does seem like it's a different team, different voice actors for the characters, so I guess might not be guaranteed to be exactly the same, but I'm sure they'll be trying to deliver on expectations laid out in the previous game. In any case, now we know that we're going to be getting the sequel, as this is literally just the first teaser trailer for the game with a few questions and answers. We don't really know too much about it yet, and in particular nothing much in detail about the gameplay. It looks like it's going to be made for the next generation consoles, the PS5, the Xbox X, and of course PC support, and currently we don't have any release date set in stone. It is very likely to be quite a long way away at this point, otherwise we wouldn't just have heard about it, and would have far more details of the game and what to expect with it. Currently though, the single coolest thing about this announcement is the absolutely spectacular animated trailer that came out with it. The 40k computer games often tend to be a particularly rich source of nice 40k animations. It's just expected to be a thing for a trailer far more for video games than it is for the tabletop game in itself. I'll post a link to Warhammer Community where you can watch the trailer in full down below. In brief though, it's just over 2 minutes worth of action. Guardsmen pinging las guns at an endless horde of tyranids, before of course the space marines swoop in to carry the day. A Thunderhawk gunship delivering Captain Titus and two other Primaris marines into the fray crushing a whole load of Hormagaunts with ease before a pretty visceral action sequence where Titus takes down a Tyranid warrior with bone swords in single combat, finishing up by casually ripping its head from its body. I must admit, I think that the animation has been done really well. The Space Marines feel as visceral and powerful as you'd expect, carving through the Xenos horrors without too much trouble for the most part, and again they've managed to do well to pull off the power armor Marines in a really weighty, visceral and real feeling way. It's quite cool to just to see the guardsmen just speechless and awestruck by the Space Marine's arrival, deliverance coming from above from the Emperor's Angels of Death. The scene finishes up with the central character taking off his helmets to reveal that he is indeed Captain Titus, and a grim panorama of a Tyranid Hive Street utterly destroying an Imperial Hive World, bogs raining down from the sky and massive swooping flocks of gargoyles. As expected, it certainly looks like the Space Marines are going to have their work cut out, there's plenty of nids for them to get their bolters and chainswords into. Perhaps the most interesting details from the animated trailer are the changes to Titus himself. First up, he is a Primaris Marine now, so he seems to have crossed the Rubicon at some point since the last game. Of course, Primaris Space Marines weren't even a thing when they had the last version of Space Marine. A lot can happen in 10 years of Games Workshop releases, I guess. Secondly, in Games Workshop's apparent bid to make everything into a Primaris Lieutenant, Captain Titus himself does appear to have been demoted, maybe as a side effect from his actions in the last game, and any political fallout that that might have caused. 
Certainly could set up some interesting narrative in this one. There's nothing better than a good Path to Redemption story. I certainly wouldn't be too surprised to see him regain his title by the end of the game's campaign. Finally, something that they called attention to in the Warhammer community posts about this is that it looks like he might have his weapon chained to his arm in a similar manner to the Black Templars. I believe they do that something along the lines of showing that they're not relinquishing their weapons until the battle is done and the enemy are vanquished. Perhaps Mr. Titus might have done similar, showing everyone he's going to be on the go until all the bogs are dead and his honour is restored. In any case, it's a really spectacular little animation. I thoroughly recommend watching it if you haven't already. Obviously, those sort of things aren't in any way representative of how the game's actually going to play, but maybe gives you some idea of what they're going to try and achieve with the gameplay. Otherwise, Warhammer community have followed that up with a couple of posts today. There's a couple of interviews with the studio, talking about their design philosophy around the trailer and the game itself. It's quite cool to see that people who do actually collect and play 40k do have a hand in its making. That will certainly help, I think. Otherwise, there's a few more in-game shots, maybe early pictures of combat mechanics and things. Maybe one of the more interesting ones is when a space marine is just running from one area to the next. You can see a nice guard Earthshaker cannon and a chimera crossing on a ramp above him. It's quite nice to see little details like that realised in the game. Truly makes it feel like it's part of the 40k universe. There's a couple of combat shots of the marines smashing through some gaunts. I feel like this game really is designed to give you a bit of a power trip, with your massive space marine demigod of death just being far more of a match than dozens of the enemy troops. Finally though, and perhaps the single most interesting detail out of all of these previews, is a new looking style of Primaris junk pack. I strongly suspect that that might have been requested to be made by the studio, so he can still land on hordes of enemies with a big hammer blow strike. The reason that they'd have to design a new one of these is that they just don't really have one for normal sized Primaris space marines yet. They have the ones for the Inceptors and the Suppressors, but both of those are slightly different variants of armour. I believe that the Suppressors wear an Omnis pattern armour or something. The shot's a bit blurry, and it might well be better to check out the actual in-motion version down in the article that I'll link below. But I must admit, my initial thought on seeing it was that those twin big thrusters just look a lot better than the actual Primaris jump packs that they have at the moment. Maybe I'm just used to what I've seen before, but the jump packs for the Assault Marines, Death Company and things just look really quite iconic in 40k, and it'd be pretty nice to have Primaris Marines winging about on some of the older style ones, maybe with some sort of Primaris Shock Assault close combat unit. They said in the text beside it that it was designed by the Warhammer Design Studio, which I believe would mean Games Workshop's actual central one, as opposed to the game studio itself. Certainly interesting to note that they have that sort of thing in development, could be interesting to look out for for the next wave of Space Marines whenever it happens to come. I think that's just about it from me though. Let me know your thoughts on the game or anything else that I might have missed. I'll most certainly be having a read of the comments. If you've enjoyed the video and you'd like to hear more, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. I tend to focus more on the actual tabletop game of 40k, though I'll happily make exceptions for some really big announcements like this. Finally, if you have enjoyed the video and you'd like to help support Allspets Tactics, keeping these videos coming, I would just like to mention that the channel has a Patreon page, and you can find that down in the video description below. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, feel free to check out the Patreon page, it is down in the video description below. In any case, an absolutely massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.